Hi, Assalamu alaikum. This is Raja Saroj Sohib and welcome to this special episode on Bayer University Television. We are joined by a very special guest who has come all the way from Turkey, Professor Emery Alkin. Thank you so much for joining us. He is representing uh, Elton Bas University, Turkey uh, as the Vice President coming over here to uh, talk about the association that, and the terms that has been signed between the two universities. Sir, you are the Vice President of the University yes. as well. You have a lot of pressure on you to you know get this uh, structure right and get the agreement between the two countries, uh, the two universities right as well. So how has your experience been so far uh, that you have been, you know, been seeing over the years with Beria University? Okay, as I was a um, um, uh, prominent conflict resolution of the, uh, of, the of Turkey uh, from my youngster, you know, right. uh, th this, this uh, actually agreement uh, was an easy one, right. actually, because two sides, two both sides have the positive, uh, uh, I mean, opinion. Uh, about doing uh, a mutual understanding. Right. Uh, so the mutual understanding is not only the students, but also the professors, and also the administration staff will be in exchange. Okay. So what's going to give us, for example, here in uh, in Bahria University, in this um, in a short uh, period of time, I learn a lot of things, because this collegium that we make uh, from the di different disciplines of the of the social sciences, uh, many professors, many colleagues have, have contributed to my conferences with the questions and many comments. All right, so I'm just going to stop you here because it's very interesting that you have interacted mm. with all the faculty yeah. members and also the students who are over here studying over here and also yeah. students who are studying back in Turkey uh, who have the who've got the uh, you know uh, the opportunity to interact with the students of Bay University. Mm. I want to ask you that when exactly was this memorandum signed for the first time and when did you receive the Pakistani students? If I remember it's going to be more than one year maybe because right. uh, already uh, from the uh, medical science uh, the department uh, we had some uh, visitors from Istanbul to, to the Bahia. Dental and Medical College. Yes, of right. course. Uh, Ferid Hanım is one of the prominent uh, professors in, in medicine. She just came here and I think uh, made a good collaboration uh, with, with his uh, counterparts. And the thing is, my dream is about this, uh, this, this contract is not only to exchange students, not only to exchange the professors or the administration stuff, doing something together. Right. Uh, there is three ways of doing something together. One is the easiest one, doing an international conferences. We made it, actually. In Istanbul, we host uh, many, many, uh, many colleagues coming from Italy, for coming from Pakistan, coming from uh, Tunisia and, uh, and Norway even. And uh, there was a fruitful, um, uh, actually, uh, uh, conferences uh, between the sides. Uh, but it is the easiest thing. The second, right. second thing is the more, um, more hard to do is doing a, a collaborative work on a paper, right. which means a scientific paper. Which both the sides agree on yes, and all the technical things. Yes, because uh, Pakistan is on experiences, we have our own experiences, right. Italy has own experiences, but um, our aim has to be find a solution to the world problem. Absolutely. So yeah. people are, are claiming many problems. But we, as the professors of the university, we cannot, you know, sit in our, you know, uh, in our desk, you know, closed doors and stuff. So I don't like it. So uh, even when I was an assistant, I was just surprised to do that because um, in many places you can go to England, you can go to Pakistan, wherever the world. Most of the professors are close to the society, right? Because there's uh, so much um, criticism. Uh, for uh, from the society to the academic life why they say that you are not practical you're always in the theories yeah. and stuff actually all the theories are generated from the practical experiences absolutely but uh, most of the business life uh, and most of the business people and the, um, and uh, and the uh, people on the streets actually are opposed to this idea while saying that the professors mm. are living in another world actually i'm trying to uh, show that no, actually we are living in an actual world and we can find a solution for actual problems of the world from the environmental side, from inflation, um, whatever you can imagine. So actually do we do are Do think that you are actually being able to achieve this purpose of yours? Yes, yes, of course. Uh, for example, for the cellular phone that we are using to, to do uh, the budgetary discipline, actually right. these are the academics actually mm. finding those, those solutions. Academics actually uh, su suggestion some, uh, some, some theories, some theses or, or practical solutions. What about the perception as well amongst the people? Like you said, there is a stereotypical thinking that, you know, practical work is not that important. Sorry, the practical work is more important no and theories are not that important. So how do, I, do you see that perception Beautiful changing? Beautiful question. Without having a philosophy right. about uh. a matter, you cannot produce a solution. 
That's why I always say, in, even in my university, I'm, uh, I'm always uh, subject to a criticism. Why yeah. I say that just stop there and tell me about the philosophy of your proposition. So yeah. most of the youngsters are, you know, stop and, you know, why, do you, why are you talking about the philosophy? I say everything has to be has a philosophy. The aim is to work for humanity. So that's why I always ask three questions in my committee. Is, is it good for the country? Is it good for the world? Is it good for the science? Right. If you don't, you cannot say yes to these three questions. So, why are you trying to attempt? Yeah. So that's why uh, um, that is my philosophy. But like first of all, Fuliana, which is in this very room now, she's taking a picture uh, behind the cameras. Yeah. She is responsible of the uh, more than three hundred uh, uh, agreements that we made in the in the various part of the world, uh, and, and it's a hard job. Uh, also, Pakistan, right? Pakistan, I think, uh, is the one of the prominent actually in the in the priority. And would you also say that the you know the historical connection between Pakistan and Turkey is also immensely important in this context that you know there's a wonderful yeah. relationship between the two countries for years now. And how do you see that helping uh, in the you know also sort of awareness amongst Pakistani students to go to Turkey and the Turkish students to come to Pakistan? Um, first of all, um, I have Pakistan uh, students from Pakistan. I am so much delighted to have them because they are hard workers. So, good, good people. That's out of the line. Yes. Then, yeah. And I think you talk about the years. I'm talking about decades. I in, in, in Turkey, nobody forgot that in the independence right. of, of yeah. Turkey, Pakistani people helped uh, Turkish people, Turkish mm. army, even. Uh, the foundation of the Turkish financial institutions. We never forget that. So uh, in vice versa, in time, uh, Pakistan helped Turkey, Turkey helped Pakistan. This is a n not a friendship, this is a brothership. Right. So um, all the agreements that we make, actually, bilaterally, is above money and is above any material thing. So it has to be a, a brothership. It has to be for the sake of the t uh, people of the two nations. So that's why I always um, of course, I take into consideration other countries. For example, we have uh, uh, p people coming from uh, Singapore. We have, we have people coming from Africa. Of course, they are also equal. But when the word is Pakistan, yeah. uh, actually our tendency uh, d differs. So it's more than just about the material gains, but it's also about the brotherhood that the two countries have and the people have and the love that yeah, they have for each it other. It has to be like that. Yeah. Otherwise, if we forgot all the all the good things, so uh, it's not human. So right. It's, uh, so what about the brothership then? So Absolutely. So, so uh, lately, maybe the uh, last thing, we are now on the eve of signing a bilateral free trade agreement okay. between Pakistan and Turkey. But still, there is some hesitation on both sides. Because when you have a free trade agreement, which means you open your sectors to the competition of the of, of the to of the other side, but actually we have to get above of our fears. Even in the Turkish side, we see some uh, some industrial says that in Pakistan they are producing textile. We are also producing textile. So so what 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 is the benefit of this free trade agreement? Actually, for me, the benefit I is huge. First of all, uh, Pakistan and Turkey will concentrate. On his own, um, on his own sectors. For example, Pakistan can be specialized right. on, a, on, a, on, a, on, a, on another branch of textile, and Turkey will specialize on another branch of textile. Yeah. So this is the collaboration between the two countries, so and both the countries can take advantage yes. from each other's of expertise course. and of you know course. use it in, in whichever uh, way course. they can. As the WTO measures gives us this chance, yeah. we have to use it. So there has to be no room for the hesitation. So from Pakistan here in Islamabad, I uh, really pray. Uh, to God, uh, for all the sectors uh, can become together and specialize. Uh, they do the vertical deepness on their own job with this free trade agreement. So inshallah, this free trade agreement will be signed in the coming months. So does that also mean that the Pakistani students who are going to come to Turkey now, they will be getting more opportunities in terms of scholarship yes, as of well? Course, scholarships, yes, of course. Scholarships, uh, investments industrial investors, maybe on banking and financial institutions, we have right. to understand the system of the both sides. So uh, as I'm here for four days now, I'm always looking on the news, on the TV, uh, the uh, PTV and stuff, I'm, I'm, uh, the, the speeches of the prime minister. It's important that you do here. This is a transformation, it's the reformation. So you be aware and you take the right decisions as well. On this note, we're going to take a short break yes, and course. we'll be right back after this break to continue the discussion. Don't go anywhere, see you after this.
All right, welcome back after the break. We are in conversation with Emran Alkin, where we're going to continue the discussion on the opportunities. We were talking about, mm-hmm. you know, the increasing opportunities that we can see in the coming years as well between uh, the people of Turkey and the people of Pakistan. I want to know that when once a Pakistani student decides to come to your university, uh, Elkin Bas in Turkey, uh, Elton Bas in Turkey, and they want to be a part of it, what opportunities yeah. do you provide to them and how can they actually come over there, there and experience all these things? Okay, I just answer this question with a practical reality. Uh, all the um, students f- uh, from the emerging countries, even in Turkey, Turkey is an emerging country, uh, most of the students are uh, actually deciding to, to, uh, to uh, educate themselves in a department that after they graduate, they find a job. Right. Yeah. Medicine. Yeah. Dentistry. Pharmaceuticals, engineering, lawyer, being lawyer. Of course, there is there is no reciprocity yeah. between countries, but even I- for the international law, it kind of remains f- the same. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for example, my my uh, one of my son, uh, they they going to London. Uh, she's going, he's going to be in the King's College, and I say, what are you going to study? Uh, international law. Okay, so you can find a job yeah. over there. But yeah. being an economist, so it's hard job. So when you just graduated from uh, economy, you can you know work in a bank. You can work in a fi- financial institution. You can work even in, a, in any any uh, business that you can imagine. But the job is not guaranteed. Right. So yeah. that's why most of the people, um, uh, most of the students coming from Pakistan, actually they're just focused on the engineering side uh, mostly, dentistry, uh, and and the medicine school. We have some of of, of course uh, beautiful students coming from uh, in hardworking students for the pharmaceuticals. So are the prominent. Actually, departments in 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 Istanbul, in Altınbaş University, are these. Well, other departments also are very powerful. Why? In the social sciences, we have many professors coming from all uh, all over the world, from United States, from uh, from China, from uh, from uh, north of uh, uh, Europe, which is the you know economy is a you know is a prominent yeah. science and stuff. So I can advise that if they want to be a, a public servant in the in the uh, in the uh, public uh, finance ministry or uh, or the prime ministry they can also educate themselves in the economic departments in the in the business administration and also how much do you think it's important for the students to realize to not just go for these you know traditional uh, fields like you said engineering becoming a lawyer becoming a doctor yeah. how important is it for them to explore other avenues as well mm-hmm. uh, especially for a country like pakistan where we are seeing that there software is, is, is a, there is a big room on the there software there is a big room for uh, software like engineering fields like yeah. software and uh, we are also powerful in the software engineering de- department uh, it's, it's uh, above the umbrella uh, below the umbrella of uh, engineering uh, faculty right but but still we are very uh, good on it so, so it's a very 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 crowded uh, department, by the way. So you would suggest people to explore other revenues as well, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And to come into different fields. What kind of other? Uh, you mentioned a few just now, but I want to know more about what other fields can people actually experience over there, and, and also l- talk a bit about the extracurricular activities as well, because I feel like that's extremely important it is. for a student's life to you know become the person that they do. So, w- what uh, opportunities would they have in your university? Uh, well, I, I strongly. Uh, suggest uh, I strongly advise to maybe uh, some of uh, one of our, uh, a bunch of Pakistan uh, students can come and they can graduate from the uh, hospital management actually right. department. Uh, it is very hard to manage a hospital, mm. especially the big hospitals. Just like yeah. uh, you manage an aircraft carrier, you know. So so many people are coming like that, and but there is a science in it. So this science uh, comes with the software digital technologies, even industry 4.0. So when you get there in four years, now you, you just, I cannot say that you will directly manage a hospital, but you will be a candidate right. to manage a hospital. For example, this is something always I- I in my head that this is one of the beautiful departments that we have. Another thing, uh, uh, psychology. Very uh, important. Yeah, psychology. Today we're talking about the mental health so much, and we need people in the field for that. T- ten years before, uh, actually, we, we didn't give so much importance uh, to the uh, mental uh, to health, the mental health, sociology, yeah. uh, psychology. Now, they become more prominent every day. So that's why I strongly suggest that they can come, even in the PhD courses, even in the uh, in in MA. Uh, we have some departments. Uh, so. That's why I strongly suggest that uh, uh, um, uh, p- students coming from Pakistan they can have their MA and PhD courses on that uh, on these matters as well. So uh, that's very important. We have 93 different programs. 
So That's I can not tell you. Yes, it's, yes it's, it's a big one. We have 11,000 students, and uh, more than 4,000 of them are foreigners coming from 85 different uh, countries. So, which means, as I'm giving the introduction to economics lesson, I'm one of the elders. You know, uh, professors I am. I'm 50 years old, so that's why they're giving me this right. introduction lesson. So I have 115 students in the in the same audience uh, from different 67 different countries. So when you make a joke, you have to be very careful. So uh, is it some maybe. Uh, so you're also uh, offering an international experience over there in terms of the fact that so many different nationalities it are gathered together. I try to be universal rather than being international because yeah. when you say international, yeah, still I, you talk sorry, about yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. Universal, yeah. universal is actually the more appropriate term for that. Uh, uh, universal because uh, when you talk, they have to understand. We have some South Africans, we have uh, students come from Pakistan, from Saudi Arabia as well, uh, from different parts of Latin America even some. Day. So wow. The audience is uh, quite international, so you have to find a universal language to. to and understand. how important do you think it's going to be for you know the world to see also an, a different side of Muslims as well? Because mm. I feel like there's a majority of Muslims in Turkey mm. and also in Pakistan. Yes, of course. So it's very important that people who are coming from other countries who are not Muslim countries mm. they get to see this side of Muslims as well, which is probably different from the stereotypical thinking that they have right now. Uh, actually, we are fasting together uh, time to time. I have the honor uh, to, to open the fasting at night. So, uh, so that's why we have the opportunity to know more about uh, right. uh, uh, different uh, Muslim countries. Uh, and it's quite uh, joyful because when you share together, uh, you feel the love uh, between the Absolutely people. So, yeah. and uh, no, there is no boundaries. Even the people from different religions actually contributed to, to those festings. So that's what they understand about their religion. Yeah. So there, there will be no boundaries. So no uh, hate, no fight. Just understanding. Just, just excitement. Just up, uh, not uprising, but uh, tr try to rise uh, sol solutions. So that's why we give so much importance to those festivities, to those, uh, I mean, uh, respect to religions, uh, respect to different uh, kind of beliefs. So uh, in Istanbul, uh, you can find all of it. That's wonderful. I also want to ask you, we've talked a lot about the students who are going to Turkey. I mm. want to know that, you know, if any Turkish student is watching this right now, what would you like to tell them about uh, the atmosphere over here in Beria University or, you know, when they get a chance to come over here and study over here, what opportunities can they get as Turkish students to come and witness, you know, their um, study life in Beria University? Yeah. So, uh, first of all, uh, the real asset of a university is professors and the academics. Right. As far as, uh, I, I, you know, I understand uh, the, the, the quality of the professors and the quality of my colleagues are in the top level. Right. Uh, first of all, and they question. Because the science gives us uh, maybe the answers, but science has yeah. to raise questions as well. So, which means every day it's a different thing. We, we don't know five minutes after. So that's why we have to create new solutions. So, as far as I understand, my my, my colleagues uh, are on the same manner. I in the same philosophy. Um, that's why I clearly underline that Bahri University is one of the prominent universities, not even in Pakistan in the region. So that's why I I can you know uh, comfortably say that if a Turkish student yeah. comes here and study. There will be a good benefit, first of all, to know the to know the country yeah. and to know the science, to know the new friends, the brothers uh, and the sisters. And also uh, uh, knowing this part of the world is going to be very important. So the emerging countries will be the prominent countries in the coming years. So Pakistan is one of them. Right. So um, and mo there is so much similarities between Pakistan Absolutely. And, and, and Turkey uh, about the manner that we do the yeah. politics, about the manner that we we, we manage the companies, so we, we just uh, give so much importance to the families. There's all the same customs. So that's why we have to learn a lot from the best practices and also bad practices. So the bad practice also is a, is a good example. So, so, yeah. so that's why we, we will take some lessons uh, from the thing that we live. All right, finally, I want to ask you that if a student now decides after listening to you that they want to come and study in your university, mm -hmm. How can they reach out to you and also how can they like get an easy access to like just getting into your university without going through the long procedures and hindrance? Because I feel like this memorandum that you've signed with the university mm. has made it so easier for the students to just be a part of yours. Yep. So how can they do that? Uh, we have a one stop shop actually and, uh, uh, and she is called Shana Hanum. Right. Uh, so uh, Shanai uh, Hanum, uh, she's the um, head of the Department of the International Students. 
All right. And and I'm so grateful to her because she's strolling around the world, uh, any every corner of the country. Even he, he she just came here, and uh, we you they all the students who like to come to Turkey they have access with email, they can telephone us, even they can find me from my email because on the website all our you know mails are are open to public so they can find us and we will find a way we never say that no this is not right department yeah you have to address that we take the responsibility of all the emails that we have so we just direct that to the uh, to the right department so they will have the answer right away in 20 uh, 24 hours so i promise to do that so it's an easy access easy, you can easy, easy. Uh, be a part easy. of your university, which of I'm sure is going to be a great. Changing experience. the country is not easy. So yeah. all, all of the students, you know, they will come from the family house. Yeah. They will come, but uh, I tell them, we are also family. Uh, all the students that we have are as a member of a family. They are my daughters. They are my sons. So that's why we treat them as as a member of family. Which I think means could uh, be a better pitch. This yes, is perfect for yes. them to just know that this is the and right thing. All play. the students that we yeah. have, actually, they know that we have just three like yes. I'm pretty sure that they do. Thank you so much, Professor yeah. Emrin Alkin and Emery Alkin. Yes. And, uh, you know, your university, Alton Bas University, Turkey, for doing this and coming over here to Pakistan and being a part of this memorandum really gives our student a great opportunity to go to Turkey and get this universal experience, like Sir said, by being a part of this prestigious institution and studying whichever field that you think is right for you. On this note, I'm going to say goodbye with thank you once again to our guests. It's and a pleasure. see you next time. Allah Hafiz.